Yeah. So yes, Selenium One still has legs. Legs. That's what you said, right? Steam. Steam. Legs and legs of steam. Legs of steam. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the thing is, it's kind of like what Selenium is. Uh, Selenium One is kind of like Apple with OS Nine. Um, they got to a point where they couldn't do anything else. Um, that's where the analogy really ends. But OS 10, really, you know, that gave Apple new, a new life. You know, better architectural underpinnings to kind of live a new day, right? And so, what Selenium One was, it was ulti it started. I think I have it on my laptop somewhere. Maybe I can show you when we with after more beers. We started with just an HTML file and just JavaScript. And so, the architecture of Selenium One was lowest common denominator and architecturally limited by whatever JavaScript can do. That was usually my my rule that I would tell people, like if JavaScript can do it, Selenium can do it, which actually means there's a lot of things that Selenium 1 can't do. Now I think it's easier to kind of talk, like the, the classic suspects are like up file uploads, file downloads. Um, we cheat with alerts because you can suppress alerts, prompts, confirms, but there's stuff like self-signed certificate warnings, uh, file uploads, file downloads, uh, your browser crashed, that's an interesting di uh, little dialog box. There's all these little things where you interface with the operating system where because you're sandboxed, in what the JavaScript kind of security window, you can't do it. The biggest one that's frustrating now, OAuth is taking off, Facebook Connect, that's called cross-site scripting. Um, I guess this is an embarrassing little footnote to history, but at one point I unsubscribed from the Selenium Users Group because I just got to the point where it was like the th thousandth time I was explaining cross-site scripting, same origin policy, and why that's limiting, that, that that's the architecture of Selenium 1. And uh, it, it, it's very frustrating to know that it was just a limiting architecture we cannot solve some of these problems. So what happened was we solved 80% of the problem, but to solve the other 20%, file uploads, file downloads, native events, all that stuff, we had to do it differently. So I was kind of scratching my head one day going, wow, yeah, we're screwed. And then Simon comes along and says, I got this web driver project. And so it was, uh, I don't know who cooed who, but. Um, I, I think the beard helped. Right, yes, we didn't have enough beards on the project too. That, that yeah, was, beard. that makes us, oh, well beards and beard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a distinctly non-beardy project. So. Yeah, very. Yeah, so once we have a beard on the project, then it's good. So, but but WebDriver is a better architecture. Like it is, it's uh, you know Unix to um, OS 9's whatever it was. Um, and so now we at least have the possibility, uh, the probability, plausibility of fixing things that that um, that you can't do. So like there's like when iPhone or Android comes along, the, the architecture is the best tool for the job. Um, the right, you know, try choosing the right implementation technology as opposed to longest common denominator, which means you can't do a lot. You end up doing, you know, C++ for IE or, you know, JavaScript for Firefox, things like that. So um, it really gives us uh, a, a new lease on life, um, I suppose, for like the next, you know, five, six years, whatever. Um, I guess, yeah, it'll all go away when we all do browser brain implants or something like that. Then we'll have to start over again. But that's it. That's the answer. Yeah. Yeah, you end up with this sort of fantastic range of technologies and, and things, and you go, ah, and I do this, this will happen, and this test can only run on Windows. And um, we'd like to solve that. One of the things we're doing with Selenium, with, with Selenium 2, um, with the web driver tech, is um, we're working to sort of try and make it more widely available and pervasive. So um, if you take a look at sort of changes going into the Chromium source tree, we're adding support for WebDriver to Chromium itself. So sort of it becomes sort of more tightly integrated at that level with the browser. We're working with the Android team to do the same thing. Um, you know, I'd love to, to, to sort of integrate with Mosmel um, and sort of been having interesting conversations with, with the Mozilla guys about the best way of doing that. Um, like there's cross-pollination of technology to be had. Um, and the end goal is that people will have this sort of, they'll be able to download a browser and know that they can run their tests on it. Like you download a browser now, you have no idea whether you can run your test. Probably, it'll probably be okay, but you don't know. And it'd be really nice if you could do that because it would mean that you would test on more browsers, which means the web gets better for everyone. And that's what we want. Any other questions? About the, 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 so the pain of migration, oh yeah, right, fine. The, 
I've got some dirty laundry, I'll just air it now. Um, so there's a few things that Selenium does with one method call that would be multiple method calls in, in WebDriver. For example, um, clicks. In Selenium, it's click, and you just that's one method call. In WebDriver, you find the element, one method call, and then you call click, two method calls. Um, if you're going to select an option from a dropdown, a naive implementation of like, you know those dropdowns that say like, what country are you in? Um, and they put like the UK or America first, except they don't call it America, they call it USA, and therefore you can't do the alphabetical sorting thing, which is really irritating, um, because I use a keyboard. Sorry, small rant head. Um, but there's lots of countries in the world, and a naive implementation of, hey, let's pick, you know, Zanzibar, would iterate over that entire list, which would be fantastically slow. Um, so, I mean, there, there are things like that where we've gone for, we'll give you the correct result, but sometimes it'll be a bit slower. Um, there are other occasions where there's sort of some performance differences or some, some differences in behavior. Um, type, for example, in the web driver back Selenium will delegate down to the send keys command in, in, from the web element interface. That command does all the events that you would expect. So some, some of the things that we've seen are people who do type, and then they do like type keys in the final character, and hope that that'll be the only update, and they've written tests with that expectation. And suddenly, there's sort of, you know, every single character they've done is fired off every single event. Or they go, well, I hit the return key, and that never works, so I'm now doing a submit as well on the form. Like they go in and they execute a bit of, they eval some JavaScript, um, eval some JavaScript, and, um, you know, suddenly, because the, the user emulation is so good, the form is already submitted and they get like errors going, oh, you can't fire an event on an element that's no longer there. I mean, my favorite bug that I got for a long time is the keyboard emulation is really good. And somebody went, I'm doing random characters. Uh, and I hold down the control key and I hit control B. Um, and the bookmark window opens and I don't want that. <coughs> and I went to them, well, as a user, what happens when you hit Control-B? He goes, oh, the bookmark window opens. And I went, what do you expect to happen? He goes, I want things to be in bold. I went, you picked the wrong keyboard shortcut for that. 